<clears throat> Welcome to X Garage. I am Heath the Carthiest, otherwise known as Heath and or the Carthiest. And this we have, who do we have here? Oh, we, well, we got oh, oh Henry, you know, kind of tagging in as usual. And uh, we have Jacob, but not the Jacob you're thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's this Jacob? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, just happy to be here. Good, for good. sure. Thank so, you. So this, this, this. So we have uh, Jake. The Jake the Snake is is missing in action today, but he was supposed to be here. Anyhow, we still we still have another Jacob, which is my younger brother, and he's going to join us. Uh, not that Jake the Snake is my other brother, but this Jake is. <laughs> that's just confusing everybody right now. Okay, so anyhow, um, we what are we doing today? We're we starting a new. We are starting a new series on Gloria Vale. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Gloria Vale. I, I do believe so. I mean, you got to say with a with a New Zealand accent, Gloria Vale, or something like that. Right. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, that 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 accent thing is something I, I've never been good with. Even doing an English accent, I struggle with. I've had I literally had someone say, I was talking to someone back in Spokane before I left, and they were like, "Are you from somewhere else?" <laughs> You sound like you have an accent. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm from Spokane, Washington. Um, anyhow. So, uh, yeah, anyhow, I have not had that issue over here in Scotland. Um, so, Gloria Vale, and we're going to start off with our usual topics. Uh, we'll start with, we're going to go through this group, just kind of look at what they believe. It's been a highlighted group due to, I think, particularly because of the uh, TED Talk with that one uh, uh, young woman who was a part of their group. Is that correct, Ethan, would you say? Yeah, that is correct. I think it's uh, Lilia or Lilia um, really sort of um, popularized, popularized the religion in the public eye. It's really actually a really small community. There's really not that many people in the community because um, it's sort of that one community based on the one island down there in um, New Zealand. And st it started, um, I think, what was it, back in the early 1900s and has sort of just um, basically stayed pretty consistent in its, its size. I think it's grown a little bit. Um, the very closed community, sort of like a, sort of like, if you think about it, you think of it kind of like Amish or um, those of us who are um, up here in the northwest, um, the Hutterites, and um, sort of those clothes communities, uh, a lot of they make their own clothes. You can recognize them by their, um, by their dress. And um, yeah, here's, here's their main page, you can see, uh, Glory Vale Christian Community. And um, yeah. I think yeah. they, they, they do some outreach um, to the community where they, I think they do some plays and some sort of theater, uh, theater things um, that um, draws you know, pretty big crowds from the outside. Um, other than that, um, that's, that's, that's Gloria, Va Gloria Vale in a, in a nutshell, but we're going to try to get into their theological side a little bit more. Yeah. And so, can you guys hear me okay? I took my earbuds out. They were dying. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we can still hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's a great, wonderful summary there. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll start with their revelation or uh, what they believe to be the basis of knowledge. What has been revealed? Uh, when you hear re revelation, think of maybe if you're a philosopher of that sort, epistemology. What is truth? How do you know what is true? Um, and, but revelation is another term, I think is the correct term, of course, as a Christian, that something has to be revealed for something to be known, otherwise you're just a, an autonomous creature just making stuff up. Um, so they have, to, to start with revelation, they actually are a, a group that firmly believes in the 66 books of the Bible as the authority in all, in terms of what is definitively true. Uh, and, and, and so that's good. They're just Protestant in that sense that they, we're going to get to a point where I think they're a little bit of a quasi, um, 
between almost in this tends to be an issue even for a lot of Protestants as well as they, they tend to have a, a an emphasis on the eldership or the spiritual leaders and in their interpretation, which kind of becomes more kind of more in line with a, a Catholic Catholicism, um, and that you need particular leaders in order to help you uh, discern God's word for contemporary affairs which is the caveat there. It's for contemporary. How do you apply God's word in today's life? That's kind of where I, it seems to me Gloria Vale will have one on one note. They have, so it's, it's not, so I don't want to buy. Well, it's, I want to bifurcate here. So it's not that they are saying that there's a central authority. Um, but what they're saying is that the, in terms of where truth is, they're saying that's the scripture. So in that sense, they're very Protestant. Um, but but at the same time, when it comes to uh, how that God's word works out in the daily life, it seems to be where they they are really undefined. Well, they're technically defined on their site. Uh, I give an example. Um, discipleship. I think that's where it's at. Uh, many Christians confused. Yeah. That's what happens in Adam. We're all confused. Um The word of God. No, it's down here, maybe. Let me let me actually just pull this out. It's under it's under discipleship. Okay. And look for I'm just going to read it from my notes because it's, but it should be on this page. You guys would probably see it as I'm reading. Um, but they say basically that uh, I'll quote it here. So finding God's will is not difficult when our thinking has been transformed and molded by the Bible. And we are willing to submit to the guidance of godly sacrificial leaders in the church who live and teach according to the word of God. Okay, this, so it's right at the end of that, that second paragraph there. Okay. Yep, yep, there it is. Okay. So now this isn't this is standard, right? You, you know, I mean you think about you you need people who are discerned in the scriptures. So it's presupposing that there's some that are not discerned in the scriptures as we're young and we're growing. I mean, that's our lives in some respects, all the way till we enter um to, to be with Jesus. But so what they're doing, though, is they really are juggling the tension on the authority where the authority lies. And I think ultimately what the group is doing is as much as the authority lies in Scripture, um, they, ha they don't have clear statement to where it shows anywhere that the elders themselves are subjected to Scripture. I haven't found a single point. Maybe I'm missing it. I mean, they talk about the Word of God here. But the elders themselves, I'm not seeing any. They're open to rev, they're open to um, insights through the Spirit leading the body of Christ. The Spirit fills the body of Christ. So in that sense, they're very uh, baptistic in the sense that um, every believer is born of the Spirit and has the ability to know the Lord, as the New Covenant says that no one will need to be taught know the Lord. All will know Him from the least to the greatest. Jeremiah. Um, 31, I think, uh, verse 30. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the, or it's not exactly the verse it's right in there. Uh, the, so in terms of what they, the revelatory where it is, it's based in scripture, but the way things are postured, I can see how they're ultimately champion a particular set of whoever these, whoever's in the eldership or the leadership and spiritual maturity uh, dictate the interpretation for the life of the community. I, I'm not, and I, I think, I, so it's not necessarily, again, poor. It's just saying at what place or what place does the community have in saying, hey, eldership, um, this is beyond clear teaching of scripture, i.e., this is my big point and I'll shut up, i.e., why are we segregated from the rest of the world? 
I mean, that to me says what ends up happening now is the eldership has authority over the community, but the community itself is, is, has become the church. It's, it's, um, they have their own city, essentially, their own mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. So the elders actually end up speaking biblical principles into everything. I don't even know, if, I don't know what role the parents have in, in training their children in the ways of the Lord in this community. So what, you, what I'm seeing is that we end up having is, is, and it's not like, I don't think it was in, I mean, maybe there are some in there that intentionally, maybe the beginning, the founders of it were uh, t perverted in their thinking and twisting slightly scripture. But um, what, what has come out of this is that you end up having these elders and maybe some of them genuinely in this position where they don't realize it, or they're just uh, it's kind of benign is that they're now exhorting their eldership and teaching scripture and exhorting the saints and, get, and, and ex exercising them in their gifts of ministry. That's one role of eldership, but now they're actually functioning as the cops, as the state, as the, the parents. Um, and, and so I can see how you get these testimonies coming out of the group saying, we have no way to think. We have no way to to be who we want to be because if you're in that community if you're not following the eldership you're essentially questionable of whether you're a christian or not you're here you you don't think unless you think along the lines of the eldership uh so i, I want to hear you guys' thoughts on that i again i think it's it, what i'm seeing here is yes they hold to and which is wonderful that, that the word of god is foundation but i think the error here on revelation is there not clear, number one, two things, it goes to ecclesiology, the, the study of the church, where they've, they've, instead of the church being called out of the world to live in the world rightly, they've called the church out of the world to live in a new world, i.e. like an Old Testament Jerusalem. And it has made everyone in that community subject to elders at all times. So there's really no way for the people in the community to think apart from the elders um thoughts i'm sorry i'm kind of i'm not really tr i feel like i i, I want to hit harder on my point but i i did little study and i, I should have done more yeah so i i you can see it with these kind of groups because they they often zero in on on specific scriptures right um so um, they would, they would, of course, probably focus in on, you know, um, be, be separate, go out from them and be, be you separate or whatever. Um, that would be one, um, one verse, you know, that they would, they would focus in on. Um, you can see that they, you know, they, they focus in on the head coverings as like a huge part of their, their, their sort of, um, the way they appear to the rest of the world. Um, and so we, yeah, so, so yeah, like, like you're saying, like, <clears throat> these these things once again they kind of break down all the hierarchy that the word of god sort of talks about um that god has set up um for us right we've got government to to take care of um to punish the wicked we've got uh we we've got um parents to um you know govern the family and take care of that and we've got our church leaders you know to to govern um the body of christ and they've sort of wrapped all of those roles up into their 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 leadership as sort of like maintaining and controlling all of the all of the authority within the community right so that's what you were talking about with them being sort of playing cops father and and religious um leadership and so um yeah there definitely is a problem there right because scripture is pretty clear about the definitions of the, the different authorities um, sort of um, siphoning down through that, right? If if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, go ahead, Jake. Were you going to Jacob? Were you going to say something? I say Jake, oh. but I don't normally call. It. I'll call you Jake. <laughs> <laughs> um. God. Well, you know, I could talk forever, but okay. The, stop right there. <laughs> no, yeah. just, just, <laughs> I uh, in my mind, I I think of it kind of like. We all, we all know dogma is, is good, you know, it's necessary. You have to have dogma in order to move forward. 
but their you know their mentality around this whole thing is like if it ain't broke don't fix it you know so their their whole lives are just set in stone like their whole path forward is like you, their divorce rate is zero and i think that's great you know but it's like if you're if you have there is no room for doubt like zero room for doubt you know so revelation mm -hmm. you you don't need revelation we have it all set in stone but that you is know? revelation go explain that a little further for me no i just mean no i know what you mean i i'm, I'm just playing on your what you're playing on is that oh okay uh, yeah for you to have for you and have something set in stone whatever that stone is that's your revelation yeah so so but there's no questioning is what you're saying right yeah there's yeah, no, questioning. no questioning can you flip the stone over yeah you know can you can you look at this stone can, it, it's like their revelation works the idea like okay so in the in their documentary series they had this uh they had a million dollars saved up they were going to buy a new oil rig to drill for oil and I was just like, wow, that's a, that's a big deal. So they're all sitting around this table, you know, like, I don't know, maybe 12 guys, 12 older guys. And that was the elders. That was the council. And they're like, well, when we, when we come to a decision like this, we, we ask if it's God's will and how we determine that is we all look at each other. We all pray and we, we read the Bible and we, uh, mm come to a decision and we ask each other, is this God's will? And, and yeah. they'll each give a testimony. I believe this is God's will because, and that's kind of how they, I don't know. Yes. It seems that's how they work through there. Yes. There. You brought up, sorry, go ahead and finish that thought, but you brought up a okay. point I, I wanted to get at and you just hit on it. No, go for it. Um, I'm going to find it here. It, it, that is the, the, the piece that I missed and I wanted to get at was uh, that shows that their basis of revelation is not, centrally located in scripture and i mentioned the elders but they also said that um where's it uh, here i'll pull it up i do have it community decisions are made in full unity this is a quote from the site not through making a vote and living with a discontented minority um, so in other words to make decisions in full unity there's no discontent minority, okay? Mm. This principle gives the church great strength and stability, but can only be achieved. This is the but, the, the clause that says a kind of a concession. But it can only be achieved with people who submit to the leading of God. So in other words, they're equating God with the unity of the community, which goes back to who? the elders yeah. so the community it's just all wordsmith i mean it's not wordsmithing i mean and, and it's it's their way like you said it's their rock and it works and uh but for them it's not just pragmatism they do believe it is um a uh, uh the the it, it, i think in many ways it is truth but they're perverting the truth by their big mistake is by dislodging the community from the world that nowhere in scripture does that ever is that ever a claim for the church paul first thessalonians says we're to be in the in in in, in the world in the sense of uh, we're called out and but we're still living in a world that's fallen so we don't go and create new communities where the elders have all say over every little affair you're dealing with but that, because what that ends up doing is, again, for these individuals, like you mentioned, Ethan, who want to put makeup on and just not, are not really, they're not believers in Jesus as the Lord, as their Lord and Savior. Maybe the, the Jesus they think of allows them to wear makeup or whatever. Uh, we talked about this, maybe it's before we even started our, our cast here, is that um what you're doing is you're you're forcing them into a Christian community that they're not ever they were never a part of because they're not born of the Spirit. Um, if you're if you're not born of the Spirit, you're not going to listen or obey the Scripture that rock your foundation, and there therefore it's going to create for them they're going to want to leave, 
and then it brings out these these testimonies that are just um, rightfully in some ways true and then in some ways false that they're a, in, a, in a controlling group well it's only controlling if you're not moving with like Jacob said if you're not with the stream if you're not in line with what's believed but that goes with the world on a larger scale the epistemology is let's all keep our beliefs to ourselves in order to live in in a common uh currency and, and way of life and shut up when you get in the streets and don't apostatize me or, or apostatize yeah don't apostatize but don't uh uh what's the word um uh, uh don't convert apostolize, apostolize yes. yeah pro proselytize yeah 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 don't do that yeah. to me just keep yeah. it to yourself so what I'm saying is that these people that leave their community essentially find themselves in a bigger community with different rules, different regulations on how to meet and greet and, and be kind. And they're going to find that there's actually more, just as much, well, again, I'm not, um, I don't know what was going on or has gone on in that community. All I know is that the, the legal reports brought against them mm -hmm. have not been able to sustain any warrant that's strong that shows any evidence of what you would find out in the world community of yeah. of things such as bestiality and and child trafficking etc yeah uh so i would say a lot of those reports a lot of these, i'm kind of saddened to see that um this gets into this this is like beyond revelation so i'll stop I know. but the point <laughs> J jacob you brought up was really great was that the they have an openness to the spirit's leading which i think is great personally i do believe in the spirit uh, leading I, i'm full-on baptistic in this sense personally i know maybe jake jake the snake is i don't know we we have little nuances but we're all pretty similar that um elders are are to are gifted to teach and to equip the saints for the work of ministry and that um, the community, the body, the the temple, if you will, of Christ, as everyone who has the spirit of Christ in them, um, has has uh, can 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 everyone is accountable by the spirit to Scripture, and what it seems to me is even when they talk about the openness of the spirit to lead the the, the community that they're in, if anyone's questioning the leadership, it almost seems that there's the leadership isn't quite subjected to the spirit in the community uh, yeah. and so there's that imbalance yeah that's that's sort of what you get right right when you when you stick all power on the on you know either whether it's a group of men or or a, a single man right it, you get that you get that sort of imbalance where um the church as a body doesn't quite i don't know that doesn't quite have that equality. I don't know. That, that would be getting to eschatology. We're talking about revelation. Um, and, and, and sort of talking on, on that thing is, is really interesting. Um, that sort of idea of, of, of having a standard and when they're living inside the community and when they're leaving the community is really interesting because the interviewer uh, were, um, actually asked um, Layla a really interesting question where um, she goes, so why did you wear this clothes, right? The clothes that they were wearing in the, in the village uh, or in, the, in the, the community. And she goes, well, because it was, it was for the men, because the men wanted control over us. That's why we wore that clothes. And then the interviewer goes, so why do you wear your clothes that you wear now? And she kind of, she kind of was like, uh, uh, well, for to impress men was basically what she said, but but she kind of like was like, well, it, it's because of men, but but it's because I I want to wear the clothes I wear like this. It, it, it empowers me, you know. And it's like, well, in the end, you're like, sorry, you you've just subjected your you've you've come out from one um, authority and you've just put yourself under another authority, and you've um, and and so like so yeah. So I I in all that yeah, I, I completely agree with you that that um revelation is one of those things right that um you either submit su submit yourself to one or the other and luckily for us uh, the revelation that we have is 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 foundational um yeah in a, in a good way yeah. yeah i was gonna i was gonna tag on that jacob do you have a point to add to that real quick my my point is totally kind of a uh 
conjunction to this, so it's not necessarily subordinate. Go ahead. Um, God, I did have something. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> well, I talked too much. I, I could I could keep talking, so then you if it comes back. Yeah. Okay, so um, I was going to say this brings us to the next thing is is the uh, for Revelation to stay on point. Thanks, oh. Ethan, for sharing that and tying it back. Is that um, they are King James onlyists um, in the sense that um, I didn't pick up on their site that it's like in well, I guess it is an onlyist, but they don't use that strong language as you would find with those who identify as King James onlyists. Like but the they are saying that the elders, um, if you just go to their site, Gloria Vale, I don't know what the, the actual, GloriaVale.org, NZ, I don't know, that's probably because I'm just I don't know what the NZ is, but maybe it's... Uh, New Zealand. Uh, okay, yeah. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shows my my American ignorance. Uh, I'm it's not calm. Everything, what the everything crap? Everything has yeah. UK. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. this? <laughs> um, um, so, uh, yeah, the if you go to their site, you'll see that they do mention that they the, the elder the spiritual leaders they don't tend they don't use elder on their site, which is interesting. I think that's kind of a again a Baptistic nuance that is not necessarily a, a Reformed Baptistic nuance, but they seem to avoid the word elder or pastor um, uh, eldership, which is a biblical term. Um, uh, but anyway, they just talk about. Uh, how these whoever was the we that started the group and continues to be the we that oversees the group uh, determined that the King James Bible was the official Bible that they use in the community. But what I found was fun, and maybe I could show it here on our our deal is that uh, this is just me being uh, my my as we know and uh, my degrees in are in exegetical studies but i thought it was fun i don't need to pull it up it's on their site but there's a verse they use and it's in matthew and basically they uh quote the kjv and then uh i want to see if i can find where i maybe have some notes on it they quote the kjv on matthew um let me do this Okay, there it is. Matthew 20, 26. And they use the in the mat. And so the KJV used the term minister. And so uh, the but then they clarify in their site that it's uh, saints, it should or excuse me, it should be servants. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully we have time for this before our or zoom zoom, session. zoom runs out i know it sent us that warning when was that how long ago no oh, that was what was it maybe minutes. almost 10 10 minutes ago so okay it might be um running up against the clock here shoot okay um is it on okay so basically yeah. they quote the kjv ministers of god and then they they go on to pair they go on to say i.e a servant but servant is used in like the ESV, the NA, the the, the yeah. Holman standard, all these others. It just goes to show, like, for me, it seems like there's this overemphasis on their uh, kind of a, it. It shows that the on one hand, there there it's, it's it's a sense of control and hmm. and not the freedom. Uh, kind of these little nuances that you see that this doesn't depict the freedom of the saints to know that. Actually, the the original is the Greek and Hebrew, and then we make translations, and then they, they basically uh, in English, and the English yeah. language changes, and all these nuances. They're just excusing all of that, and I think these are little ways for people, our viewers, and anyone listening, to note a group that might be overly controlling, is little things that are actually not even have no basis in scripture. To be controlling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yet in their own language, they have to confess that there are better words for terms that were used previously in maybe a particular translation. So basically what I'm saying is there's inconsistencies even in their revelatory principle um, where they have to clarify it's came, King James only, but now they're using the ESV here. Um, yeah. Just a fun little note. It's really almost on the yeah. side, <laughs> but 
just something to think about. Yeah, and 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 for your the, the King James only is out there. Like, yeah, it's something to think about. Like, the the Bible is translated into thousands of languages at this point. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they've quite reached two thousand, but they're. I think they're pretty close to reaching two thousand languages, and not all of those are in English. Um, surprisingly, um, because there's lots of different languages, and so like what what is our standard for that right and i guess they would go back to it has to be the the texas receptus and all that sort of stuff but i don't know how much this group gets into whether they are tr onlyist or um did you run across that heath at all no or that was the interesting thing no all they gave was um that thor authoritative here okay here here we go um let me share go ahead and keep talking sorry yeah yeah, because I'd be interested in that because um, that's sort of how um, a lot of like really fundamentalist groups will sort of uh, try to stay consistent with this idea of like, well, yeah, we believe in the Greek and the Hebrew, but it has to be the text or Susceptus specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And so all they write is here is this. And that's just basically that the um, after years of study and examining the fruits of <clears throat> The lives of those involved in translation, translating and following the various English translations available, we settled on the authorized King James. They don't even mention the text. They don't mention any of that. They don't get into Greek or Hebrew, why they think that this was the better selection of the, the later manuscripts that were found, none of that. Um, which was my question is just like you're saying is, 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 it is a, it's not a consistent logic to follow just the King James even if you look at the manuscripts and even the manuscripts that the King James used, it's based off of the same logic that is used that the eclectic text or the text that yeah. uses the current manuscript, all the manuscripts that we found up to date. Uh, it's the same method. Cause yeah. Uh, Cause I'm pretty sure there was like 20, I think it was like 29 different textures receptuses at the time that they were yeah. using to translate it. And so it's like, okay, so then, you you still have to say well which one of those textus receptus is and they they actually do have a version that they're like this is the textus receptus but I think it's actually reverse translated out of the King James version so that it mm. would match the King James version perfectly yeah mm. yeah but so but yeah it's it's, it's interesting because they say they've done all these years of study it's like well what did you study yeah um, show nothing. us show us some of that that study but but you know that's that's once again like. <clears throat> A lot of this stuff can be really, really subjective, and and really like if we look at the for the Roman Catholic Church, right during the um, the Reformations like that, there was an emphasis on using the the Latin Vulgate only, and in a way, it was once again it was this idea of control, right? Because the priest could read the Latin Vulgate, whereas most of the people were not speaking, could not speak speak Latin, and. <clears throat> um, it's kind of hard to completely equate that with with King James version because the King James um, you can still read the King James and understand it for the most part. But I, I know a lot of people who they try to read the King James version. It's it's like reading another language to them, and they they literally just say I I I don't know what it's saying, and you give them another translation, they're like oh yeah yeah I understand what it's saying, and and so once again it's that that idea of control right through through revelation. Um, yeah that that happens yeah so i i think um the the point yeah that's that's good i think it's a good note to end this this episode on is um revelation is important uh and and also that i think it shows uh there's there is in the group the the error seems to be which we'll get into more of is not so much where they look to for knowledge they look to christ's word um and over their own but at the same time they they have followed a certain uh, leadership's interpretation that is clearly on a line of a plain interpretation and that's what they that's what i loved about reading them at first i was like oh they're talking about the perspicuity of scripture the plain reading of scripture that is key and central to reformed thought yeah that so many protestants have lost 
they don't think it's so plain and therefore we need to look to other interpretations and interpretations. I'm like, you can point, if it's not this text, then you're pointing to another text, which points to another text and you've just removed the authority from the text. Just yeah. stop the garbage. Yeah. Just stop it. <laughs> the, the text is plain. Like, like well, I, I, it says Jesus is Lord. It says yeah. gathered. And like, if we're going to get, and that's the thing that, so I don't know. And I just went on a bunny trail. Yeah. Uh, Basically, no, no, come on, Molinists, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the point is, is that yeah, um, they they're in their technical method. They're not staying with the plain reading of the text. They've actually uh, left open the door for themselves to championing championing a interpretation that is not so much clear but obscure. Some something that is always subjected. Not like I wonder. I don't know this. Maybe we can do more research, but I wonder if if a if a member of their church that has been in the in the group in the community for maybe you know they're twenty five years old. They've been diligent, disciplined. They've submitted to leadership. They love the Lord. They are born of the Spirit. They listen to Scripture, and they confront the eldership with something that they're on a line on, i.e., leaving the leaving the exiling the the world to go create their own little world. Um, if he challenges them with that would that person be considered questionably saved? I think yeah. so. Based on what mm -hmm. I, I'm finding, I think that they would, and they would question that person. That person would be essentially, if they kept in that belief, they'd be cut off. But yeah. yet that belief is actually uh, biblically plain. Like again, first Thessalonians, second Thessalonians told Paul didn't tell him to, he just said, live wise among the, those who are lost uh, work, do work work among mm -hmm. unbelievers but don't create your own economy and in, in world without unbelievers that's not no. evangelism <laughs> no. <laughs> okay all right no awesome good stuff cool so we do want to go ahead and end there um, yeah thank you for joining us for x garage don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh, uh for more good content x garage X garage. X garage. <laughs> I'll, uh, I need to figure out how to stop this. We're going to keep laughing. Just keep laughing like we just. <laughs> 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 <laughs>